Welcome to Woodpecker. We're going to be covering the basics of the platform today and walking through how easy it is to create your own templates. First of all, Woodpecker is a Microsoft Word first application so that you can have access to your documents and Woodpecker at the same time without having to switch windows. Woodpecker keeps your templates as Microsoft Word docx files so that you can keep them portable and use them just as you would any regular Microsoft Word document. Not to mention, Woodpecker connects with every other software that you might be using. Let's get started. To launch Woodpecker, navigate to the Home tab in the ribbon in Microsoft Word and click on the Woodpecker Automation button. You'll see that Woodpecker gets launched on the side of the document over here. We, of course, can adjust the size of this window by clicking and dragging. And the first thing we're going to see is that Woodpecker shows us that there are no fields yet created for this document. What we want to do is turn this document into a template as quickly and easily as possible. The simplest way to turn your document into a Woodpecker template is to use Woodpecker's Auto Template Engine. We're not going to cover the Auto Template Engine in this video, but there are a multitude of training and recording resources on our website where you can learn about how to use Auto Template. Auto Template essentially analyzes your documents for terminology that it thinks is likely to change and walks you through turning those suggestions into fields. Let's get started by creating our first field. To create a field, we'll navigate to the top part of Woodpecker here and click on the Create a Field button. We'll see that we'll get prompted to provide a name for the field, select a field type, an optional default value, as well as specify optional guidance notes. For this field, let's call it Client First Name. There are nine different Woodpecker field types each there to help you represent whatever type of variable information that this field is going to represent. They're pretty self-explanatory, but essentially, single line text is the simplest field type that there is. It's just a single line of text. Multi-line text allows you to create multiple lines of text. Rich text allows you to insert custom styling, like colors, fonts, sizes, alignment, etc. Date allows you to specify a date format that will get presented to you as a date picker. Number will only allow you to enter in numbers. Single select, multi select, conditional, and formula are the more advanced Woodpecker field types. Essentially, we're looking at a drop down field, a drop down where you can select multiple options at the same time, conditional logic, and Excel formula manipulation. For this field, we're going to choose single line text to keep things simple. I'll leave the default value blank, but insert some guidance notes to give the template submitter an idea of what they should be entering in into this field. Now that I've created my first field, we can see it as part of the Woodpecker interface here. And as we create more fields, they'll get added underneath this one and we'll end up with a very simple form. You'll notice that there's a little plus zero here next to the field that we just created. This indicates that this field is being used zero times in our document. Of course, we would like to insert this field at various locations in the document. To insert a Woodpecker field into your document, it's super simple. We basically just select the text where we want to insert our field. And then we're going to go ahead and click on that plus zero button you'll see that that client first name field now automatically gets inserted where our cursor was and we end up with a little blue box that indicates that Woodpecker has created this field and now manages the contents of that field for us. We can also see that the counter has been incremented by one and now says plus one. Next, let's create a client gender field so that we can accurately insert the client salutation. I'm going to choose the single select type and specify a few options. I could optionally default the client gender selector but I'll leave it blank for now and I'll go ahead and save. We see our new field gets inserted right here. If I click on that dropdown, we have the three options that we've created. Now let's create a field for the client salutation. For this field, I'm going to use a conditional field, and the conditional fields are very simple ways to represent conditional logic in your document. This blue box here is a self-contained condition with an if section and a then section. We can have as many of these self-contained conditions within the larger conditional field, and they'll get evaluated first to last. So firstly, let's select client gender to say if client gender equals male then the value of this field should be mister. If the client gender equals female then the value of this field should be miss. We can add a third condition to say if the client gender equals other then the client salutation should be MX. We'll go ahead and save this field here and as soon as we select an option for the client gender you'll see that the client salutation adjusts accordingly. Lastly we want to insert this field as we can see that there's a plus zero here next to the client salutation. We'll do the same thing that we did for client first name by selecting the Mr, Miss, and MX language here and then clicking on that plus zero button once again. You'll see that that client salutation field automatically gets inserted where our cursor was and now as soon as we change male to female for example and click populate this salutation will adjust accordingly. Next let's create a date field. We'll call it date, choose the type to be date, and then we'll select a format. We can optionally default this date to today, yesterday, one week from today, or two weeks from today, as well as leave some guidance notes if we like. When I save that field, we can see that our new date field is here. If we click on it, we get a date picker. Now I'd like to insert this date field just the same way we did with the others. 
I'll go ahead and select that date text here in the document, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that plus zero button once again. You'll see that the date field now gets inserted where my cursor was. If I were to select a date and click on the populate button, that date will automatically get inserted in the document at the location of that field. If we scroll down to the bottom of the document, we'll see that there's actually another date here, and it looks like it's the same date but displayed in a different format. Instead of creating a new date field and specifying a different format for it, we can actually create a formula field to parse the existing date field we've created and display it in a different format. Let's call it date2. We'll select formula for the field type, and in the formula box, we're actually going to search for the parse date formula. When I insert it, I can now insert a reference to the date field that we've previously created and select the new format for this date. I'll click Save, and we can see that now our second date field is the same date selected in this first date field, but displayed in a different format. Finally, we'll insert this field into the document the same way we've done with the others. Now all we had to do was create a single date field, and we created a second formula field to grab that existing date and display it in a different format. Now we can also reference existing fields that we've created in other fields. For example, let's say we had a field called clause one. This clause one field is now here, we could optionally reference an existing field, for example, client first name, within this clause one field. To do that, we'll just click on this reference a field or clause button here, and we get a list of all of the clauses that we have in our clause library, plus a list of every field that we've created, for example, client first name. If we click on that, we're going to see a reference to client first name get inserted into the clause one field. Additionally, we could reference a clause from our clause library, for example, remedies clause. Now, whenever we populate this template or insert this clause one field, Woodpicker will automatically pull down the remedies clause that we've defined in our clause library. The clause library provides an intuitive way for you to standardize content across your team. Anyone on your team can create a standard clause that is then shared with the rest of the team. Only creators of a clause have the ability to actually edit these clauses. However, everyone else on the team can still use them. Now that we've completed this template, we'll want to save it to the Woodpecker document collection. We can do that by clicking on this little floppy disk icon here in the header. The Woodpecker document collection is a cloud-based storage drive that allows you to store and share templates across your team. To look at the document collection, let's go to the menu, click on collection, and we'll see all of the folders and templates that everyone on my team has created. I have the ability to use these templates, download them, but not edit or delete any that I haven't created. That's the basic permissioning that's baked into the document collection. Think of the document collection as a DMS Lite. It functions as a storage space for your Woodpecker templates and shares them with the rest of your team. When it comes time to generate documents from our templates, there's four ways that we can do that. The simplest and quickest is to actually just fill out this form here and click on the populate button. You'll see the document that we have open shuffle with all of the data that I've specified. The second way is to instead of populate a single template, we can actually populate multiple templates at the same time, either as docx files or as PDFs. If I select populate multiple as docx, I'll see a list of all of the documents in my collection I can then select any template that I like that I would like to populate alongside the engagement agreement that I currently have open. I'll select the power of attorney and click on populate. Woodpecker is going to analyze all of the fields across these two templates and let me know if there are any fields that I've missed. For example, county name, state, or primary agent relation. Some of these fields have been filled out with default values, but some of them require input. Once I've specified values for the non-overlapping fields, I can click on the populate button here. Woodpecker is going to analyze both documents fill out any conditional logic, formula calculations, and clauses, and populate both documents for me with all of the data that I've specified. I can then download a folder containing these final documents, or copy a link to my clipboard to share those documents with someone else. Now let's say that I want to create another template using the same fields that I've just created. I can navigate to the menu, go to Reuse Fields, and copy the field data to my clipboard. Next I'll open up another document, in this case a durable power of attorney, that is not yet a woodpecker template yet, and if I navigate to the Reuse Fields page once again, I can paste the field data from the previous template. Now I can see all the fields that I've created in the other template that are now usable in this one. You'll notice that these new fields have plus zeros next to them, indicating that none of them are actually being used in the document yet. So of course we want to insert some of these fields into the document. Let's start with client first name. But instead of manually trying to find where each instance of client first name is in this document and clicking on the plus zero button to insert it, we'll click on this down arrow here and select bulk insert. Bulk insert allows us to insert this field at every occurrence of some word or phrase in the document. In this case, client 
first name. When we click insert, Woodpecker will look for every occurrence of client first name in the document and insert our client first name field at each of those occurrences. Bulk insert is a really handy way to insert many fields across the document in an automated fashion. The third way to populate Woodpecker templates is via our questionnaires. Navigate to the menu and click on questionnaires here. This will open the Woodpecker dashboard in your browser and will automatically fetch your questionnaires. We can see that I've created two questionnaires here each indicating how many responses I've received on each. Woodpecker questionnaires allow you to expose the population of your templates to the outside world. For example, we can create a questionnaire and select which templates we'd like to be populated when this questionnaire is submitted. I'll select the power of attorney as well as the engagement agreement. Once I click generate, Woodpecker will analyze these two templates once again and create a questionnaire for me out of their fields. I can give the questionnaire a name, and then select which fields I would like to show up in the questionnaire. I can require all or none of the fields, as well as change the name of these fields as they're displayed to my questionnaire recipient, and leave a description or guidance note for them. I might decide that I want to exclude some of these fields from the questionnaire, for example, Clause 1. Once I'm satisfied with the selection of fields that will be displayed in my questionnaire, I can either send this questionnaire to a user via their email, or they'll receive a unique, secure link or I can copy the shareable link to put on my website, put in my own emails, or send to people internally. When we click Save, our questionnaire is generated, and we can now begin receiving responses. When a questionnaire is submitted, the underlying templates will be populated and emailed to you. You can optionally brand your questionnaires, as well as the emails that questionnaire submitters receive, with your own logo, as well as your own firm name. To explore more Woodpecker features and get started yourself, visit our Learning Center, Community, or Help Center. Of course, you can always chat with us in real time.